It's great to be back. I'm Kenji and welcome to my cocktail kitchen. This week I'm going to be looking uh, at the base formula of cocktails. Uh, so we're looking at the three S's, the spirit, the sweet and the sour to create that balance in terms of their family uh, and their structure. So as I, I'm coming along, if you want to make a drink, you'll need those three things. You'll need an alcohol, uh, you'll need a spirit and you'll need uh, a citrus. Ice, a shaker, a glass, and we're away. And just using those simple key elements, we're gonna be making a daiquiri, uh, a margarita, a caipirinha, and a caipiosca. Uh, so four great drinks on this family uh, that's really simple and great to make. Uh, this week, uh, brought to you by my good friends at Monan, we're gonna be looking at how to utilize sweet and sour and spirits uh, in the drink. So, let's get started. Uh, so, my cocktail formula, which I developed uh, over the years talking to, the, to bartenders around the world, looking at the different structure. So, base, accent and modifiers. There are a lot more additional elements and we're going to be looking at some of those in the Bartender Masterclass. Um, but just to start it off, base, the heart of the cocktail as it were, uh, is your alcohol. So that's what you, you start off with. Uh, so, vodka, gin, rum, tequila, uh, those are your, your key points and those are the bits that you want to explore. Uh, and use the other ingredients to highlight the flavor of. The difference between vodka and gin is the botanicals in the gin. So you want to drink uh, that highlights the flavors of the botanicals of the gin. If you covered up the flavors of the gin, you might as well have used the vodka. If you're gonna use a whiskey in a cocktail, you want the unique flavors of that whiskey to really shine through. So whether it's the smoke uh, or the depth or the richness, those are the bits that you come through. So in a cocktail, uh, excuse me, non-alcoholic cocktails for the moment, uh, the alcohol is the, the base. And then the accents, the things that change uh, your base flavor. And there are five key balanced flavors that we have on there. So our mouth and our palate can tell us five key elements. So you'll know them as sweet, sour, bitter, salt, and umami, umami, the fifth Japanese sense meaning uh, savory, uh, like MSG or seaweed. Um, but in cocktails, we, we don't really use too much umami, maybe with some red wine or uh, in a Bloody Mary. We don't use too much salt, but I'm gonna use a little salt in the margarita. Um, and we use some bitters, but the key element that bartenders uh, and drinks are based on is this simple balance of sweet and sour. Doesn't mean equal parts and everyone's taste profile is different, so you have to find your own uh, element. But what you can do is just take your, your base alcohol and then look at the sweet and sour balance of it. And as we said, create this family of cocktails that just use those three ingredients. So we're gonna start off with the, the daiquiri. So you're gonna need three elements. A rum, I'm using a cacique, a Venezuelan rum that I had uh, in my cupboard. You're gonna need a sweet and sour. The sour, uh, I'm gonna use a lime, if you haven't got limes, you've got lemons or grapefruits, obviously it does change the flavor of the drink, but still great and just change the, the sweet and sour uh, balance. And then um, as a nod to the Hemingway daiquiri, I'm gonna use the Monin's uh, pink grapefruit uh, syrup. And that's it. Just those three ingredients to make the daiquiri. Generally it's served uh, straight up, so in a, a cocktail or a martini glass. Uh, you can use different vessels if you wanna put it on ice, there's no set rules, especially when you're drinking uh, at home. So I'm going to do straight up. I'm going to chill it down with some ice, like I was in a bar. Uh, if you've got space in your freezer or your fridge to chill your glass down, that uh, uh, works really well. Because this drink is served without any ice, uh, it's good to chill everything down, ready for the drink. Uh, you're going to need a shaker. Obviously, if you've got a cocktail shaker that you can use, uh, great. If you don't, I had a look around in my house to see what I could, else I could use. A thermos flask would work quite nicely. It's nice and strong. It's metal, it keeps things cold. Uh, you can use a water bottle. Make sure it's a strong one so the plastic doesn't break uh, and the lid comes on. The good thing about all of these uh, is they have inbuilt filters. I found a um, protein uh, shaker. Once again, it's got a filter inside. It's nice and strong. You can um, shake with that. Or today, pretending I don't have any of these uh, other ones, I'm going to use um, my blender, my smoothie shaker. 
has my cocktail shaker. So I've got my shaker, got my three ingredients uh, ready. I'm going to fill my shaker with ice. Now, the more ice, uh, the better, because it keeps it colder for longer. It dilutes less, although you do want some dilution uh, for shaking. Measurements and parts, to keep it simple, two parts, one part, one part, and then play around uh, with the balance of the drink that you have. Last week I showed you uh, that an egg cup, just under 50 ml. So I'm gonna use that again. So two parts on my rum. I'm gonna squeeze my lime. In a bar, I would use Mexican elbow, they thought. Just use a good old lime zesters. I mean, in different parts of the world, different citruses have different flavors. So actually in, in Brazil, the lima, kind of cross between a lemon and a lime. In India, uh, the nimbu lime, it's really, really small, hardly any juice in it, but very uh, aromatic. The kaffir lime, I love the, the smell, but of the leaves uh, and of the skin. So, two parts of the rum over the ice. One part, Monin pink grapefruit syrup. And one part, freshly squeezed lime juice. Fresh lime, so amazing. Try to get fresh every time if you can. Makes all the difference with the freshness and flavor of the drink. On tight, keeping it closed, um, hand on both sides, give it a good shake. Nice to be able to see inside a shaker, see the lovely colour uh, that's come through. Turn in my glass, it's my strainer. There we have uh, my daiquiri. It's a pink grapefruit daiquiri, a nod uh, to the Hemingway. Nice and simple. We just used rum, Merlin's pink grapefruit syrup, and the lime. Shake it all up, job done. So, shame to waste it. Mm. Nice, it's gone five o'clock. With the daiquiri, I didn't use a garnish. I think when you're at home, unless the, the garnish adds something to the flavor, there's no real need for it, unless you want a decorative garnish to look good uh, on, on screen, on your call. I mean, there are a number of different ways you can garnish these type of drinks. If you want to have a, a cheesy uh, AT style, you can use a ring. Not a big fan of those, to be honest. You can use uh, a wedge, which you can put around the rim as well, or you can actually drop it inside, which I think is where you get a lot more of the flavor. Uh, up to you. Now, if you think about it, all we need to do is switch the spirit, uh, switch, we're going to change flavours uh, for the, the sweet, and we're going to keep with the sour, keeping with that balance, and we can create uh, a number of other drinks. So the next one we're going to look at is the margarita. This time I have frozen another glass, you can see how uh, frosted Hopefully you can see how frosted and lovely that looks, nice and cold. I'm gonna keep that uh, in my freezer tray uh, until the end. I've also got my tequila frozen. I think the more you can freeze, actually it's easier to freeze things at home uh, than in a bar. So I've got my um, 
uh, tequila. I'm going to switch out the grapefruit. Now, in most margaritas, you would use uh, a triple sec, uh, like Cointreau. Um, but I'm, with a Tommy's margarita, you switch out the Cointreau for agave syrup. I'm going to have a, a twist on that, and I'm going to use honeycomb. Big fan of Don Julio. I've got the Añejo, which is aged tequila. Tequilas generally come in three, uh, in white, silver, uh, and gold, as it were, or you could um, Blanco, Reposado, and Añejo. So the Blanco, generally unaged, or zero to two months. Uh, a Reposado, meaning rested, you've got between two and 12 months, and an Añejo, aged older than one year. So this is an Añejo, but uh, use your favorite tequila, honeycomb syrup, and lime, once again, shaken up. I'm gonna use um, an actual shaker this time. So, I'm gonna use a measure of that lovely syrup goldenness. Get a cracking of the ice. So that was two parts to one part of the honeycomb. And then the lime juice. So it's spirit, sweet, sour. Simple. Simple. So, the shards, you can see it's ice cold. Cheers. Mm. Oh. The sweetness of the honeycomb and the rich of that honey element going with the, the agave, uh, boosted with the fresh lime. I'm going to be pretty happy after this. Right, so that was the daiquiri and the margarita using the same sort of balance. So, the caipirinha and the caipirosca. This time we're not going to shake, we're going to muddle. So I've got two glasses, I've got um, my ice, I'm going to use a muddler. Now, muddler is the way you muddle things using a muddler. Now, this will come in lots of different shapes and sizes, um, or you can use a rolling pin. Ideally it's got a flat end, uh, so you can squish everything together. I'm going to use Smirnoff Black, because I've got a lot of fond memories of using that when I was working with them. And I'm going to use a cachaça in here. So I'm going to use passion fruit, and I'm going to use strawberry, but use your own preference of flavor, uh, of syrup or puree uh, to come through. So you need about half a lime. So one lime, depending on the size of the lime, of course. You chop it in half, thirds, chop those thirds in half again, put that in the drink. That will be a good amount of lime coming through. The difference between the actual using the lime than just the juice is you get the oils from the skin as well. So we've got the lime. We're going to use the sugar. So with the caipiri inia, we're going to use the passion fruit puree to produce the sweetness and the flavor, maracuja. And I'm going to use uh, the strawberry, reduced sugar strawberry, to create the balance over here. Muddler, squish the fruit. How does Bob Marley like his caipirinhas? With jamming. So that's an old, very bad joke. And his friends. I hope they like jamming too. <laughs> Funny, got to make yourself laugh. So that was our sweet and sour. We're going to mix. Ideally, you would use crushed ice for these drinks. Drinks with a lot of citrus work really well. When they're colder. Oh. 
One little tip, you can get your normal ice, put it in a shaker or a... Give it a good bash. Sorry if that was really loud. And then you get lots of lovely crushed ice as you can see. Coming through. Do one with regular ice as well. So I don't disturb your ears too much. It's good to be able to see the difference. So this one, we use Blucker, Caiprioska, Cachaca, the Caiprinha. Still, spirit, sweet and sour. You know those lovely passion fruit flavors. And you see in terms of the amount of ice, it makes a real difference. To have a look and obviously the temperature and the taste will be. <laughs> Caipirinha, Caipirioska. That one was using the reduced sugar and the vodka. Caipirinha, using the cachaça passion fruit, obviously all using lime, as well as our daiquiri and our margarita. Ooh, so four great cocktails. This has been Kenji's Cocktail Kitchen. Thanks for watching.